Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about how we diagonalize a matrix using the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So I'm going to start with the main conclusion or theorem of this video, and then we'll go through a process to make sure we believe why it works. So we say that an n by n matrix A can be diagonalized as long as it has n distinct eigenvalues, so lambda 1 through lambda n. In this case, we say that A is diagonalizable with A is equal to P, D, P inverse, and we know that P and D are specifically written as the following. So if we let V1 through Vn be the eigenvectors, then D is equal to the matrix where we just have the eigenvalues on the diagonal, so lambda 1 through lambda n on the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. And then P has columns that are equal to the eigenvectors. So we put the eigenvectors in each column, and that makes up P. All right, so I think this is a really incredible result. This says that if we have a matrix A with dimensions n by n, as long as it has exactly n eigenvalues that are all distinct, then we can diagonalize A and rewrite it in this fashion, where we use those eigenvalues in the eigenvectors. So this works specifically when all of the eigenvalues have multiplicity 1, which would mean that all of the eigenvalues are distinct and different, so we don't have any repeated eigenvalues. As long as we have these n distinct eigenvalues, we can break A into these pieces where it's equal to P times D times P inverse, and P and D come directly from the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So you don't need to just take my word for it. We're going to go through some algebra of writing this all out to confirm that this really works. So we're trying to show that A is equal to P, D, P inverse. And instead of looking at that, I'm actually going to rewrite this as A times P, which would be equal to P times D. So what I'm doing is starting with my statement and then multiplying on the right by P. That helps me cancel out the P inverse. So now I have A times P is equal to D times P. So doing this means that I don't have to handle that inverse at all. I don't have to think about how I would find that inverse. I'm just looking at D and P, which I've defined in terms of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So what we're going to do is show that A times P is equal to D times P. And we're doing all of this given the conditions that we gave at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to do this kind of haphazardly. I'm going to do A P first and dissect that a little bit. And then I'll do D times P second, and we'll show that they're equal. So we're going to show that both sides are equal, meaning that we can rewrite A in this way. So if I take A and multiply it by P, my P matrix is made from the eigenvectors of A. So we are calling those V1 through Vn. Then following how matrix multiplication works, the columns of what happens when we take the multiplication are A times V1, A times V2, all the way through A times Vn. So we can think of the matrix matrix multiplication as these smaller matrix vector multiplications. Then the reason we're looking at it this way is because we know something special about these A times the eigenvectors. So eigenvectors have our special property that when we take A and multiply by them, we get lambda times the vector. So instead of writing A times the eigenvector, I'm going to write lambda times the eigenvector. So in my first column, I have lambda 1 V1, second column lambda 2 V2, all the way through lambda n Vn, where these lambdas are the eigenvalues of A. So basically taking A and multiplying it by the matrix of the eigenvectors should be equal to taking the matrix where we take the eigenvalues and multiply them by the eigenvectors. This just comes from how eigenvectors and eigenvalues work. They have the property where when you multiply the matrix by an eigenvector, you get the eigenvalues scaling the eigenvector. Okay, that's a lot of words. Not sure all of that is too helpful but hopefully you can follow through this process and see how we're rewriting A times P as this matrix here. So now let's look at P times D and see if we can get it to look this same way. Remember, we're trying to show that A times P is equal to P times D. That would mean that A is diagonalizable. 
So I'm going to say we're doing P times the matrix D, and D is special in that it has the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Then when we do this matrix matrix multiplication, we're going to do the same thing where we just look at the columns. So the columns become a matrix vector multiplication. So the first column is P times this vector that just has lambda 1. The second column is P times the vector where we have lambda 2 in the second element. And then we do this all the way through P times the vector where we have lambda n in the nth element. So I'm just taking these columns from my matrix D and multiplying each of them by P. Then let's think about what P looks like. So P is all of the eigenvectors as their columns. So I'm going to rewrite my columns of the big matrix in this way. So I have P times my vector, P times my vector, and P times my vector. So this is my columns 1 through n. Now we're doing this all for a reason, and it's to show you what happens to each of these multiplications. So when we do this matrix vector multiplication, let's say in the first column, we're doing v1 times lambda 1 plus v2 times 0 all the way through vn times 0. So all of those zeros get multiplied by the columns 2 through n, and those are going to go away. And all we have that isn't 0 is this v1 lambda 1. Then in the second column, something very similar will happen. So we do v1 times 0 plus v2 times lambda 2, and then everything else is zeros all the way to vn times 0. And we would repeat this for all the columns until we get to the very last column of our big matrix here. So we're getting v1 times 0 plus v2 times 0 all the way until we get something that isn't 0, which is vn times lambda n. And rewriting this, we're getting exactly what we wanted. So we're getting that the first column is v1 times lambda 1, the second column is v2 lambda 2, all the way through vn lambda n. And this is what we found for a times p. So this is good. We've shown that a p is equal to d times p. So, okay, I know this is really abstract and we've just done this very generally, but hopefully seeing this process can sort of confirm for you why this works. We have this really special relationship between the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, and it allows us to write a in this way, where a is equal to p d p inverse. So, all right, to close out this video, I want to do a quick example with a matrix that we actually used in the past video. So I just want to put this idea into practice a little bit and show you what this looks like. So let's diagonalize the matrix A is equal to 4, 2, 1, 3. So this is a 2 by 2 matrix. And let's do this if A has eigenvalues lambda 1 equals 2 and lambda 2 equals 5 with the eigenvectors negative 1, 1 and 2, 1. So this is a matrix I've used in a lot of my videos. So we have A, it has two eigenvalues, and it has then corresponding eigenvectors here. So we know now that A can be diagonalized if it has exactly two distinct eigenvalues. So we know that because A is 2 by 2, so it needs two different eigenvalues if we want to rewrite it as P, D, P inverse. So since it does have two distinct eigenvalues, we're going to write it as p d p inverse and remember that p contains the eigenvectors and d contains the eigenvalues so p is going to be negative 1 1 in the first column and then 2 1 in the second column those are my eigenvectors then d is going to have my eigenvalues on the diagonal and you really do need to kind of align them up so we're doing 2, 5 on the diagonal, and then zeros in the other spots. Now, we actually used this example in the last video and found P inverse. So we swap A and D and put negatives on B and C with that factor out front. That is 1 over AD minus BC. And we're getting the inverse matrix negative 1 third, 2 third, 1 third, 1 third. So it's typically more important to find P and D than we can use technology or some other process to find the inverse matrix. But I picked this example since we've already found that inverse matrix. So there we go. We can rewrite A as this diagonalization and the diagonalization comes from the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. 
In the next set of videos, we'll go through a more extended process of how to do this, how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and assemble everything. But that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.